Let's look at the first four geometric shapes, the circle, triangle, square, and pentagon. In each of them are angles of degrees that when added together, always total a specific number relative to that particular shape. For instance, if we take a triangle, the sum total of all three interior angles is always 180. For both the square and circle, it is 360. For a pentagon, it is 540. Now at this moment, let's step back and look at these numbers in a different way, as there seems to be something about them that reaches beyond a simple sum of angles. Did you notice that they happen to be in the same numerical neighborhood as tone 432? What's more, they all add up to 9, just like 432. As an experiment, let's take a look at the numbers found in basic geometric shapes, then apply those numbers as vibration cycles to hear the tones they produce. First, let's listen to what the 180 total degrees contained in a triangle sound like. And here's a squares and circles 360 in cycles per second. A perfect octave up from the triangle. What about the pentagon at 540? That sounds like a harmonic fifth of the other two. That's interesting. What are these tones? They are F sharp and its perfect harmonic fifth of C sharp. Let's keep going. What does a hexagon 720 sound like? Another F sharp. Here's a seven-sided septagon, which totals 900. This is an A sharp which happens to be the note required to complete an F-sharp major chord in perfect three-part harmony. And finally the octagon, where we get 1080, another C-sharp. Suddenly, geometry is expressed by tones, and these tones just happen to create the most beautiful form of music a perfect three-part major chord in the key of F-sharp. Is this something we've been missing for years? Is it important? To the famous philosopher and mathematician Plato, the answer would have been a resounding yes, for it is Plato who advanced the study of two-dimensional geometry into three-dimensional geometry, and who began to recognize that nature whether expressed as a tone, the petal design of a flower, or the spiraling design of a seashell, seemed to follow a 3D mathematical pattern. In fact, it became an obsession of Plato to try and find the simplest three-dimensional geometric shapes, and his quest ultimately revealed what we now call the Platonic solids. In essence, these forms represent the most elemental construction blocks found both in human-made and natural forms. So let's see if and how they fit into our geometry tone grid. First, there is the tetrahedron, or a three-sided pyramid comprised of four interlocking triangles. As we did before, let's add up all the angles found in those four triangles. The answer, 720, which we have already seen is the tone F-sharp. Next, we have the cube, whose six 360-degree squares totals 2160. What does it sound like? Twenty-one sixty is a high C sharp, and as you will see later, a very interesting number for other reasons as well. Next up is the octahedron, constructed of eight triangles. This shape totals fourteen forty, which is another perfect F sharp higher up the scale. The icosahedron is made up of twenty triangles, so the total number of degrees is thirty-six hundred. As a tone, 3600 vibration cycles create the A-sharp needed to complete yet another F-sharp major chord that sounds like this. At this point, we have seen how two- and three-dimensional geometry can be expressed by the notes found in an F-sharp major chord. Could this also be true with what is known as sacred geometry? To find out, we will first need to build a design called the germ of life, 
which, when repeated, goes on to reveal the seed of life, then flower of life pattern found at sacred sites all over the world. First, we start with a circle at 360 degrees, which is the familiar F sharp. We then add our second circle, bringing the total to 720, another F sharp. Three circles totals 1080, which provides the harmonic fifth of C sharp. Four circles is 1440, another F sharp. Five circles totals 1800, or the A sharp needed to once again provide the harmonic third of an F sharp major chord. And finally the sixth circle, which brings the total to 2160, another C sharp. Amazing! It's as if we can now both see and hear the flower of life pattern that has intrigued humankind for thousands of years. So now we have two-dimensional geometry, three-dimensional geometry, and even sacred geometry being represented by different variations of an F-sharp major chord. How is this not common knowledge? How have we missed this connection? There are actually three explanations. One, for reasons ranging from the mundane to the conspiratorial, musical instruments are no longer tuned to an A vibrating at 432 cycles per second, but rather 440. Two, modern tuning calls for equal temperament, which no longer adheres to Pythagoras' whole number simplicity. And three, the tuning method required to reveal geometric shapes is based on a mathematical grid rather than mathematical ratios. This grid, if it had a name, would probably be called something like factor 9, because the number 9 is found not only in the sum of every note on the grid, but also as the number required to move up or down the scale. For instance, if we started at note A at 216 cycles, all we would have to do is add or subtract the number 9 to reveal all the other tones in that octave. And it is here, on this incredible factor 9 grid, that we find not just some of our geometric numbers, but all of them. Conversely, modern A440 tuning reveals not one correlation to geometric numbers. Now let's go back for a moment and take a look at one of these numbers, 2160, the number expressed by both the cube and the germ of life pattern. You may have already noticed that without the zero, it is exactly half of our magic 432. That's worth noting, but what is even more intriguing is the way this number keeps showing up in other large-scale measurements. To discover one of these measurements, we will need to jump forward from Plato's time to when the Mayan civilization was flourishing. Roughly 1500 years ago, Mayan stargazers were the most accomplished astronomers the world had ever known. Their concept of cyclical time led to many incredible discoveries. The accurate length of a year, the exact dates of seasonal changes, even the moments when solar and lunar eclipses would occur. But their most amazing discovery was of something known as the precession of the equinox, which makes note of a very slow wobble of Earth's axis. Somehow aware of the fact that this wobble takes 25,920 years to complete, the Mayans called this cycle one great year with each of its 12 great months requiring 2160 Earth years to complete. And what about this? Did you know that the diameter of our moon, when measured in miles, also happens to total? You guessed it, 2160. Lastly, watch what happens when we apply simple division to this highly synchronous number. 2160 divided by 2 is 1080, the angle sum of the octagon. By 3, 720, the total of the hexagon by 4, 540, the pentagon, and by 5, are you ready? It's the ketone of 432, and by 6, 360, the number of both the square and circle. All F sharps and C sharps, with our 432A thrown into the mix, as if it were some kind of clue to solving a cosmic riddle. Maybe we should look at this number even more closely. As we've stated, our closest celestial neighbor, the Moon, is 2160 miles across, and 216 is exactly half of 432. What about the other large object in our sky? Were you aware that our Sun is 864,000 miles across? Incredibly, where the Moon's base number sequence is half of 432, the Sun's number sequence is exactly twice 432. And do you know how many seconds there are in a day? 86,400, or 43,200 for the 12 hours of day, and 43,200 for the 12 hours of night. Or try this, take the 360 degrees found in the circular shape of our sun, and moon, 
and then multiply it by the 12 hours of either day or night? The answer, 4320. Or how about this? What is the only whole number that when squared comes to within 0.01% accuracy to measuring the speed of light? 432. What is going on here? We have all these different things, earth cycles, time and celestial measurements, geometry, sonic frequency, yet they are all represented by the same numbers over and over again. To answer that, we must search for the factor common to all of them, and that common factor is the 5,000-year-old Sumerian 1260 counting system. It is what gave us the inches to a foot, the seconds to a minute, and the 360 degrees in geometry. It's almost as if the sky god visitors, who the Sumerians called the Anunnaki, provided humanity with a counting system that would lead to the discovery of these synchronicities. Could it be that the number 432 really is some kind of cosmic key that unlocks a language of higher understanding?